after after much consternations and perambulations and hopefully they're not going to continue we are here we are live on i wire i wire pulse monday and this is paul gordon and i'm here with professor rambo el professor rambo we've had an adventure getting on here we couldn't first i couldn't hear him then uh, uh, and and what do you hear when when I played the two-minute warning, what did you hear? Zombies. <laughs> what did it, what did the zombies thousands sound like? And thousands of zombies all going. <laughs> I'm hoping I did a test recording and it didn't sound like thousands of zombies in the recording. So hopefully you guys didn't just hear two minutes of zombies going. <laughs> and if you did. You're welcome. It's actually so this, like a like a really dark wind. Yeah. So so we've got issues here, man. But we finally made it. I guess really all things considered, we were only five minutes late. We were going to be on nine thirty. Got on at nine thirty five. So hey, all things considered, I'd say that's that's pretty freaking good because <laughs> I didn't. There for a little bit, I was like, we're, we're never make. We're, we're, I was like, okay, that's it. Technical difficulties, we're not going to be able to make it. But we got a great shave. Sh- shave? I can't even. I'm having we got technical a great shave di- today. We, we I like did to have a promote great. Gillette. Gillette's. Sponsor the of the show, but not really. Get. The best, the best. Yes. Gillette. I, I don't remember the. <laughs> I don't remember the jingle, like the closer. I don't know. What is the Gillette? Never mind. I'm going down a rabbit hole. Don't go down rabbit holes. We got a, we got a great show. Of course, we got a great show lined up for you on, uh, on our full auto segment. We'll be talking no gun confiscation without representation. What do you think of that? I like that title. That's cute. That's great. That's cute. Yeah. So when when have we had representation lately, dude? So. Dude, just just come on. Oh, am I stepping cool on it? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're I'm stepping sorry. on my cool title. Why would you? Why you gotta be like that, son? That ain't even Cause right. Because I'm, I'm a contrarian by nature. That's that's why. true. On on uh, on iWorld, we're gonna be diving into well the area that's sort of close to your favorite topic, which I'm sure it'll work itself in. The Kurdish problem between Russia and Iran. Ew. And yeah, that that's definitely going to involve Turkey. We're going to bring Turkey into that conversation, which is Professor Rambo's next to guns. It's guns, then Turkey, and I don't know. That's it. Then <laughs> roast beef. Roast beef. No, Actually, guns no, and turkey. And soup. 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 Guns, pork. turkey, and soup. Man loves to talk about some soups. And he'll talk like hardcore about soup some, is good. <laughs> soup is good, and and then on on the eye prepper if we get to it, which I don't have a reason to you know, we won't, but you never. You know, know why I like to go hunting? Because I take a thermos of homemade soup with me, and it's I like sip it all day soup. in the cold. But you make some exotic soups, dude. He makes some soups. If you if you seriously, if you want soup. You gotta hook up Professor Rambo because he makes some hardcore soups, like some good stuff, man. He has stuff in his soups that I hate that I end up loving in his soup. He's, mm. he's like that kind of soup guy. So, an eye prepper, we're gonna talk. Fear is not the path to good prepping. That's 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 what we're gonna get to. An eye prep on. So let's just. Let's just get to the first segment here. You're not going to hear it. You're going to hear more zombies. Hopefully the studio audience will hear the 13-second bump. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to enter a gun-filled zone. Don't let yourself be triggered by the sound of full auto news about guns for gun supporters. And yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave our main show scene on here because as it so happens, the title of this episode is based off of this story. And this story is Take My Guns, UN, please. So that's the title of the article or the the episode. And it's based on an article which you can find on iState.tv. 
Chicago anti-gun politician calls for U.N. troops to seize guns from Americans. First of all, let me ask you, did you do your homework? I'm talking to you, Professor who, Rambo. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to you, dude, Professor Rambo. Did you do your dude, freaking homework? I don't do homework anymore. So yeah, I, I gave you homework. About... We're talking about Boykin's boys. Boykin's boys with the blue helmets. Boykin's boys. Let me show you a picture are, are, of uh, are Boykin's boys here. Blue helmets? Anything like German helmets? Well, you know... I I don't want to say I don't I don't want to characterize the I got a lot of German in me. There you go. By the way, studio. So if you're watching, you can see there's Boykin's boys. There's uh, Cook County Commissioner Richard Boykin uh, next to his boys. There, some UN guys. I don't I don't want to go down the road of characterizing all Germans just being authoritarian. I'll just say authoritarians. I won't. I don't want to go down that road. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pull the German card, dude. Because, you know, I'm not racist. It's not today. It's Monday. Monday's non-racist day. I don't know if you knew that, but interesting factoid. That's, that's oh, my God. Are you drinking an energy drink? I'm drinking Munster Java Munster and then, Java and then you tell me that, <laughs> then you tell me that you can't sleep at night and you're up till 3? Who said I can't sleep at night? You did. Uh... I'm up till three. My problem is when I'm up past three, but I need this right now because if I don't, I'm going to fall asleep and you're going to have to carry the show, and I know you can't do that, son. Hey, I didn't even zip up my, my shirt here, man. I got my shirt hanging out. I got to zip this up, baby. Let me, let me fix myself before I wreck myself. Hold on. Hold on. I got this. Hold on. You gonna... Watch, the magi Watch the magical transformation. There you go. Look. Normal citizen dude doesn't know anything about guns. Now, gun expert. Right there. That's how I you do it, folks. I was certain you were going to catch some skin. Nah. Nah, I almost did, though. <laughs> almost did. So let's talk about this story, because this is pretty... I'm going to say it's a pretty messed up story. Did you read the story? Dude, dude it, it is so... Fantastical. It is... It is a gift. It is a gift that, that this guy has given us. That, that it's it's almost not worth talking about. Oh my gosh, like it is saying, totally worth talking about. It's it's clickbaity. It's and and honestly, it's it's it says something that these gun grabbers feel so emboldened as to make the dramatic statements that he made. And this guy's still walking around. Well, for me, you know what it smells like? It smells like somebody in the leftist leadership said, dude, the Trump investigation isn't going well. We need some distractions. We need to pull people's eyes off of the rest of the stuff that we're screwing up. Uh, and and can you guys create something? Can you make something like really inflammatory that's going to get all the rednecks? And well, the, they did that. And, and uh, maybe some of the gangbangers are going to be pissed off just as much as the rednecks. Um, can, can we try something? It's like, oh, I got it. We'll, we'll say we're going to bring the UN in. Yeah, this. That'll but this, I don't off. think that's the case. I I that, think that this guy smells. is the real meal deal, and he is. He lives so inside a bubble that he doesn't realize how insane he signs, sounds outside of it. And then the other possibility is this, that the, the Democrat leadership said, hey, dude, let's test this. Let's see what happens. Let's see where people are at. Let's see what kind of reactions we get. I mean, we know we're not going to actually call in the U.N. yet, but let, let's just, just run it up the flagpole. Let's let's get a gauge of where we're at and how much more work we have to do. That's a very real possibility. Let, let, me, let me share with them then the, what the reaction is. I think about 25% of the country would show up to shoot a blue helmet. That That's where I think we're at. Um, so we're talking a, about 100 million people showing up with their guns because they want to shoot themselves one of them their blue helmets and, and there won't it was be a limit on million. how many you take what's yeah, that even if it was just 20 million it'll be enough 20 <laughs> it'll 20 be million? enough dude 
half of a percent would be 1.7 million people showing up with That'd guns. That'd be more than enough right there. Yeah. Right there. I'd yeah. be like, nah, no, nah, no, nah, man. No, nah, no, nah, never mind this. So this is a so, quick. Go ahead. So the question is. The meat of the story, but it, go ahead. If hypothetically, if this were to kick off and happen, which it couldn't because the people who would ask the UN for them to send blue helmets would probably be swinging from trees within a week. So um, I don't think that anyone could protect those people, at least not in the United States. They'd have to leave the country. Well, um, well this guy, well, we're going to get to what he actually said. We're going to get actually to the meat of the story. We've been teasing it. So that's what you do when you're doing a podcast show. You want to try to tease it as much as possible. Cook County Commissioner Richard Boykin, that's his name, Boykin, and that's why I'm calling the U.N. guys Boykin's Boys, has recently decided that the gun violence in Chicago is such that he should call in for outside help. But as you could figure out, he's not calling for help from the state of Illinois or the federal government. No, 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 no. He's calling for help from the United Nations. Now, I bet you if there was a progressive in office... Well, there is a progressive in office. But, I mean, if there was a, like a hardcore, real, dyed-in-the-wool progressive. If there was a hardcore, dyed-in-the-wool progressive in office right now, uh, he would be calling for the federal government to come in. But since, since it's not, since it's uh, Donald, and I don't think that Donald really is on board with the whole one, one world, one government uh, agenda that the progressive of this guy's choosing would be in for. And I think that's the problem. So the guy just returned from a trip to the UN in, in, in New York City, and he came back all chuffed, I guess. So, so this, is, this, is, this is in part what he said, and I'll have you respond just to this part. I have like three different quotes from this guy, and they get more and more insane. This is the first one. I'm hoping to appeal to the UN to actually come to Chicago and meet with victims of violence and maybe even possibly help out in terms of peacekeeping efforts because I, because I think it's so critical for us to make sure that these neighborhoods are safe. Got a response to that, Professor? If you're if you're one of the party press or the, one of the press, I guess if you're party press, you wouldn't be able to answer this question. But if you were by chance one of the press and he actually had the dumb luck to call on you, what would be your question for this dude? <laughs> I would love very to see simple. That. Okay, so you're part of a party and an institution that created this mess. So why don't you and your party fix it? Wow. My my reaction would be a little differently than that. Probably wouldn't be as polite. There may be some expletives involved. There may be some some calls for, hey dude, why aren't you arresting this guy? This is an elected American official who is openly calling for armed foreign soldiers to come to American soil and take action against American citizens. I mean, you take that in. That is what if if you if you undumb this, if you if you break it down to to what it really is, that's what this guy just did. He just called Whoa. for foreign troops to come to American soil and seize guns from American citizens. That's, and that's what he why just I did. Said, elected official. And that's why I said the minute this takes place the people who asked for this would probably be hanging from trees if if the right people got in if a certain element got uh, a hold of him because this is high treason I mean, there's is, no other way is, of looking at it within within the state of state face parameter this is total high treason dudes if this yeah. is the land of rule while well, I get to that I will get to that right now I want to get to the next quote because like I said I got three quotes I think three and they and they build up in their insanity he adds to it by saying there is a quiet genocide 
taking place in too many of our communities. 80% of those who are being killed by gun violence are American and often killed at the hands of another African American. So we must protect these population groups. And that's what the United Nations does. They're a peacekeeping force. They know all about keeping the peace, right? And so we're, we're hopeful that they'll hear our appeal. You got a response to that? Yeah, it's very simple. The party you're with created this mess. Why don't you fix it? Yeah. Uh, he uses a uh, quite hyperbol. Oh, go ahead, you have more. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, it, 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 to elaborate on that, it, it's the inner cities have been controlled by the Democratic Party for what fifty years. Yeah, they, they pretty put, much. They have iron. They grip. have. Yeah, they have put black people in this position. They have destroyed their families. They have taken the father out of the family. They have done so much to damage. Uh, not just blacks, but anyone living in the city uh, who happens to be poor. And now, instead of solving the problem they created with their liberal agendas, now they want someone else to fix it for them. Right. I'm trying really hard not to use profanity. It really is difficult. Hard. It is really difficult on this story. What not is to wrong just... with these people? It, and. It... It's it's insane. It's an insane. He it's uses not a insane. Word like it's genocide. intentional. No, I. It's intentional. Okay. They're the ones who are destroying the black communities, and now they want someone else to come in, who's their lackey, to fix it. I think there's more to it than that. I'm I'm going to get to that, uh, but I want to focus on the word genocide and how he's, he's used this word so in such a cavalier way. Genocide. It's, his it's his party's direct he, responsibility for that. Yes. Is it genocide? I don't know if it's genocide. It's, it's definitely population control and it's population management and it's and yeah, it's the Democrat Party that's uh, uh, in for the population control and, and population management. They like keeping the group of people right where they at because then they're not competitors. But the word genocide, this is the purposeful, intentional, deliberate, strategic action to annihilate a certain people group within a geographical region generally. And that's 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 not what's going on. I mean, these numbers are horrendous. Close. These numbers are horrendous. But in terms of percentages, they still they're that's hardly genocide. If this was genocide, you wouldn't be seeing what ten, fifteen dead a week, something, whatever it is in Chicago. I don't even know. Maybe it's it might be less than that. It might be five or six. Whatever it is. You wouldn't see that. You would see numbers in, in the hundreds, in the thousands per week. There'd be well, a he's deliberate... Definitely, he's definitely using the word quite loosely, because it's not genocide. No, It's, it's self-destructive, is what it is. Yeah, I want to I move to, you know, to meet, uh, Professor Ramba, you said this is uh, it's a Democrat. This is the Democrats. This is their work. They've created Chicago. One of the ways that they've created Chicago is 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 actually Boykin is directly responsible for because in point of fact the dude is a rabid anti-gun shill who has over and over again called for disarming Americans or making gun ownership in one way shape or form impractical for Americans this is a man who would favor introducing foreign soldiers armed okay with fully automatic weapons these aren't bump fire guns these are fully automatic weapons okay kids it's putting them on american streets foreigners on american streets with fully automatic weapons he would trust them more than he would trust americans simply being armed to protect themselves against the violence that he's Calling the foreign troops to, in to quell, and you look in Chicago, and you know who gets guns? 
the easiest in Chicago? It, it's not the person trying to obey my laws. It's, it's the criminals. The criminals outgun the non-criminals significantly. Well, it's, it's, it's pretty self-evident that he's trying to set up a precedent that, oh, hey, we've had you and the peacekeepers work. here yeah, in the past, and, and they did some good things. So, hey, we, we, we should have them in here again for, for this other thing that's kicked off that's much more important. So he is the exact reason why I would never give up my guns. This person is the reason why I will yes. cling to my guns no, until I'm right. dead. The, the, these yes. people walk in the halls of, of the bureaucracy and of the legislatures from the local to the federal levels. You'll find these folks. There's, there's plenty of them there. And if they ever feel like they have enough power, they'll do whatever they think they can get away with, including confiscating guns. They, they know they can't confiscate guns right now. They know that's impractical. And I want to highlight something that he did as recently as January of 2016. He actually tried to push through an ordinance that would force gun owners, uh, ironically, that would force them at the end of a gov gun, if it came to that, to buy liability insurance when they bought firearms. And if you failed to get the coverage, you could face a fine of $2,500 up to $5,000. And, and if you paid the fines, that is. But if, but if you didn't, if you failed to pay the fines, you can expect an armed invasion of your home by by one of Boykin's boys and I guess and you know previously it might have been the Chicago police now it's it's the blue helmets he wants to send the blue helmet because the blue helmets they they wouldn't care they have the, they and have, I no have a serious problem with buying insurance for firearms because now you're in some insurance company's database as having paid for firearm insurance and if they ever want to create a list of firearms owners hey insurance company who insures their guns? Thank you very much. The, yeah, the insurance of... companies are going to all of a sudden grow a, a, a backbone and a spine and stand up to the government and say, no, that's unconstitutional. Now, I'm going to do the last quote from this guy. He steps things up a little bit. So he, he said of the attempt basically to circumvent the Second Amendment that the reason that he introduced this idea was because or excuse me this is this is this is actually the reason why he introduced the idea for the for the insurance this isn't the final quote he said because we're trying to do everything we can to have a major impact on gun violence this horrific gun violence is destroying our community last year in chicago 488 people were killed and 2986 were shot this year alone 140 people have been shot and 25 people have been killed so I'm going to try to do everything in that, that I can. Now, of that, those numbers that they use, the statistics that they're, they're not weeding out to show you, one, the percentage of those that are suicides, which would probably be about 40%, 50%, thereabouts, and then the percentage of the people that are actually criminals shooting criminals. Not going to point that out either. If you eliminate the criminals shooting criminals and you eliminate the suicides, the actual risk in Chicago, as bad as it is, is not that high. It's 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 much more scare than reality, and and that's. But well, be, go ahead. Nationwide, uh, it's seventy five percent suicide by gun. Yeah, I'm just being generous here. Yeah, you're very you're being very generous for Chicago. Yes, I'm I'm being I'm being very generous for Chicago. So Chicago actually has some of the strictest anti gun I call them anti gun and an anti gun law to me is anti human, anti liberty. So it's anti gun, anti human, anti liberty laws on the books. And yet those anti gun laws are not enough to stop the violence. Why you know, it's almost as if there are other issues at play. And there's a lot. No One, way. There's a lot of issues, and I no. won't get into those. We've actually touched on them in past episodes on Full Auto. But what one of the big issues is that we touched on earlier is 
the fact that non-criminals are significantly less likely to be armed than the criminals certainly doesn't help matters at all. So among those non-criminals that face threats from criminals, almost always they have no response to the threat. They can't. They, 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 getting a gun in Chicago legally is, is incredibly difficult. So for, for Boykin, he only sees government operatives as being the only people who can legitimately own guns. Um, let me break that down in much more realistic language. Boykin is in favor only of people having guns who are willing to execute the orders sent out by authoritarians like himself. So <laughs> I, I, let, let me get to the I bet where I can find it here. The, oh, I don't yeah, but, know which I, is I, another good reason oh, never to give up your guns. Yeah, absolutely. So here, here's the last, 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 last quote that I want to get to. This is, this is from that same presser when he came back from the United Nations in New York City feeling quite shocked. He says, in my community of Austin, we've had 450 people shot and 80 people killed this year alone. And so we ha can you imagine living in a community. I mean, I don't know how big that little community of Austin is, but and so we have to do more to protect these communities, and that's what we're going to do. If we can't get it done here with the leaders, leaders of the city, the state, and the county working together to utilize their budgets to help protect these communities, in other words, to pay for the people to go out and confiscate guns. And this is, this, is, this is the real telling quote. Then I have to appeal to a higher authority and a higher force. You just think of the mindset that this guy has, that he just revealed. That he has to appeal to an authority higher, for those of you that, that, that you know, stand by the Constitution, higher than the Constitution higher than the federal government, higher than the U.S. courts. Now, the United Nations. This is in Boykin's One World Order mind. Uh, you can appeal to no higher authority than the U.N.? In any other country. Let me ask you, Professor Rambo, in any other country, would this, would this not simply be an act of sedition? I mean, this is this is outright treason. Am I right? Yeah, we said it before. We can say it again. Yeah, this is uh, this is an act worth being hung from a tree from from pretty from pretty, from. pretty demanding. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 it's it. Did you lose me? No, no, I got you, Don. I made a comment, but I don't know. I can't. Uh, I can't quote. Don said. Uh, the UN is taking guns. Uh, hell yeah, been been waiting for this my whole adult life, and I've I've seen that sentiment for a lot of people. Oh god, I've been waiting yeah. for you guys, and and that by the way is, you know, I I, I saw a couple of of posts from like uh, more fringy far right sites, and I, no, I don't mean alt right. I mean far right conservative, not alt right. But but far right, right, really hard leaning right starts really, you know, my constitutions and Mulan Leib, blah, 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 whatever, however you say that, and and the sentiment that I saw from those guys was like, well, you thought we were nuts, you thought we were conspiracy theorists, didn't you? Well, I mean, this is current year, and in current year, your friendly neighborhood conspiracy theorist looks like the freaking Wall Street Journal. Well, actually, I can't say that. I don't know. Is there a, is there a, a legacy news outlet that still has a, a rock-solid reputation for not delivering fake news? I don't know. Whatever it is, that's who, the, that's who your local conspiracy theorist is. If you want to know real news, go to the local conspiracy theorist. You know, now, basically, Tin Hat News is the most reliable news. Uh, aluminum foil news. Well, let me, let me tell you something. News. That's always been the case. 
when you when you look at the American but, but media, but now it's obvious. Yeah, now it's obvious to everybody. But they they were they were shills for the propaganda of the State Department and other institutions that where they had an agenda. Oh, uh, WMDs. Oh, uh, babies being taken off of life support. Oh, uh, Tompkin Bay. Oh. Uh, remember the Maine. I mean, th these news sources have been nothing but propaganda machines for the state. And we, we, we know that to be the case of the Soviets and the Russians and the Red Chinese and all these other institutions. Oh, but wait, we're kind of no better. Uh, no, our, not our, at all. No, we're no better. We're, we're, you know, yeah, all, the, the, all the shrill... Pipping about how we gotta we gotta get a hold of our social medias. The the government has to look, watch over our social medias to protect us from the Russians trying to infiltrate and interfere with our elections. The United States has been doing that for years, and they'll continue to do that, and they're doing it right, right now. I mean, right, you don't think that the Obama administration was doing everything in its power? to try to stop Netanyahu from being reelected a couple of years ago, he sent some of his top advisors over to help the opposition. What the oh, heck are you talking we, about interfering with elections? Don't act like that. We, we do it openly. I mean, we did it to Did it, uh, did it with Brexit. Did it with Brexit. Yep. Tried to save uh, the EU from losing uh, the U.K., yeah, it's 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 what it's what all nation states do that have the capacity to do so. They do whatever they can to try to influence the policies of their competitors. That's the nation nature of the nation state. And and it so kind of bring, go ahead. We have the conspiracy theorists now standing up and say, "See, I told you so." Um. And this only gives a lot more credence to people like you and me who say, yeah, I ain't giving up my guns. I don't care what you say. If you're coming for the guns of my neighbor or me. That's not even a discussion. Anybody that begins a conversation that in any way, shape, or form suggests even in any way uh, monitoring, controlling, limiting, regulating, registering guns, and uses that phrase, common sense gun laws. To me, they should be treated no better than this guy. This, this is where they lead to every single freaking time. Gun grabbers should be treated like the person who stands up in the middle of town hall and says, hey, our, our, I think we're being a little bit hard on pedophiles. That's how... That's how gun grabbers should be treated. There should be no. You you don't even. We don't even want to. Oh, you're 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 gonna talk about such disgusting, vulgar things. And I'll just use the the phrase, even though it might be a bunch of hooey. I'll just use it in polite company. No, 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 no. Get out of here. Get get away. I'm not doing business with you. I'm not associating with you. You are a vile, disgusting creature they should come to know that what they're advocating for is fundamentally anti-human and you're just not going to tolerate it that's that's how i i won't say i don't deal in absolute so i won't say that i absolutely deal with every gun grabber in that way but maybe 95 plus percent of them that's pretty much that's how i deal with them i i they're 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 no better than racist to me they're Vile, disgusting, anti-human beings. I, I want to bring one last point here on this uh, while you're thinking about what you're going to say. Mm. I, I want to I make this, this point that acts like what Boykin did that are left unchallenged actually only reinforce the one-world conspiracy theorists. This, nothing's, nothing's happened to this guy. And they, and they also reinforce this truth, that there is no rule of law, ladies and gentlemen. It's an illusion. There is only rule of power. The sooner you grasp that reality, the better equipped you will be to handle folks like this guy. If rule of law were truly a reality in America, Boykin would be in jail right now. He committed an open act of treason against the United States government. He called for foreign invaders 
to violate the rights of American citizens. And he did this as the county commissioner, the Cook County Commissioner, one of the most populous counties in the United States, the home of Chicago, one of the major, if, you know, I don't know if it's the largest, it might be the largest, but right up there, Chicago, one of the biggest, well, I guess New York, maybe then Chicago, one of, the, one of the major cities of the United States of America. This man called for foreign invaders to come on American soil and violate Americans' rights. And the only reason that he has not been arrested is because he represents real power. And even those who might very well want to arrest him and charge him with treason, because you, you could bet there's plenty of people in in federal state local government that 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 no dude letter of the law this guy needs to be arrested this is treason they know they can't do it and the reason they don't dare do it is because they know they lay it they lack the power to follow through because rule of law doesn't it, it, rule of law to a certain degree is part of the expression of power it's the ideational expression of power but it's it's in this case it's not it's not the key expression of power that's winning the day because if it was as soon as this guy said this if rule of law had that kind of ideational power in America today that guy well first off he probably never would have said this in the first place and if by any chance maybe he was microdosing one day and he said this yeah yeah he'd be he'd be arrested he'd be he'd be facing treason charges you got any last comments on this story well, I think the powers that be know that if Blue Helmets showed up anywhere near Chicago or anywhere else in America, uh, they'd be dead within a week. Uh, I don't think anybody here is going to put up with that. And if the, it's, it's a if test, the, what's that? It's it's a test. It's it's they know hmm. the reaction is going to be bad, but they want to know how bad. They want to know where are we at in terms of changing hearts and minds, of creating a culture that fears guns unless somehow they're magically in the hands of government people that are suddenly more responsible and uh, less well, they're trained. than people that are not government people? Sure, well, they're sure trained. they are. Sure they are. Yeah, right. They're trained just like the cop in the hallway of the hotel with the unarmed guy on his knees. Yeah, yep, trained. just like that guy. They're trained. Yep. Yeah. Just like that guy that had uh, your f scrolled on his AR. Yeah, that's the guy. Right. Special, special trained government operative there. Those are the kind of people that you can trust. So, yeah, at the end of the day, I think they they've done a test and they're they're trying to figure out where where are we at. We we got to work hard. I think harder. the test went very well. I don't think the test. I I I would. I would gauge that what they have discovered is that they haven't gone as nearly nearly as far as they thought they have as far as creating creating a, an anti-gun culture. I think I've told the story before, my daughter going to public school, how one time a teacher had a newspaper up and it had a picture of a gun, and half the class actually was like, oh, God! My daughter was not one of them, proud to say. And she said about half of them, though, were not at all, pardon the pun, triggered. But half of them were. But I think what happens for a lot of these kids is it doesn't stick. I mean, it does for some. And maybe they would have been afraid of guns anyway. But for many of them, it doesn't stick because at the end of the day, yeah, I, I think at least in America, and you're much more familiar with Europe. You've actually been there numerous times. But at least in America... It's 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 a pretty deeply entrenched thing to distrust government. It's almost an American sport to distrust government. So when you have that, it's really difficult to sell the idea that you know, all, all all the non-government people suddenly be disarmed. Mm -hmm. Really, there's really a different. subtle there's a subtle difference between Europe and the United States. Europeans are horribly. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Cynical of their governments. Uh, Americans are distrustful of their government, 
but they are trusting of their country. They there there's a fine distinction because they, they have a schizophrenic relationship with government. Yeah. They fundamentally mistrust don't trust government, but somehow they totally trust police and the military. You're talking about the United States. Yes. Yeah, but it's true it's true in Europe as well. People there are horribly cynical and don't trust anybody. Um, but they're willing to give up their rights uh, because they feel they're part of a greater culture. Like, you know, you go to Italy and everybody feels Italian in Italy and they feel like they're part of Italy. Where in the United States, not everyone feels like they're American in the same way. You know, you have this group of Americans and that group of Americans and there are cultures and subcultures in the United States. Yeah, and even as it is, the whole, uh, I mean, they, the phrase is nation state. The nation state is a somewhat modern invention, you know, the last couple hundred or so years. And the key part of that is nation, state, nation, state. You could be a nation and not be a state. As a matter of fact, the nation state was somewhat relatively new. Uh, America was a nation state. Now it's it's mostly just a state. The nation part of America, I, I mean, I think it still exists. There's a remnant that still exists, but the definition of what the nation of America is is pretty wildly varied. It's so varied that you can have you can have Democratic supporters over here saying that the American people want guns taken out of everyone's homes. The American people have spoken. And meanwhile, well, over here, the, the totally opposite from the Republican supporters that say the American people have spoken. The American people have spoken and they have uh, elected Donald Trump. Meanwhile, over here, the American people have spoken. Resist. I mean, that's, that's some fundamental yeah, but, divides between huge segments of yeah, this. But, Population. We got to define. We got to define some terms here because a nation has an ethnic identity. The United it, States it, it does doesn't not necessarily. Have that. It, no, a nation doesn't necessarily have to be an ethnic identity. It's 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 overwhelmingly an ethnic identity. Those are their traditional nations. But you can be a nation that that's not well, you're, ethnic. But you're you, talking about America talking. was a nation built upon an ideal. No, it wasn't. It was, it was that was a, a great experiment. It was a country built on an ideal, not a nation. Well, it's a country full of many nations, of every it's, nation. It's a nation it's filled with many Well, it was a nation filled with many nations. But, you know, even during the Civil War, what was the first primary national identity that you had? It was Virginian nationality, not, not American that's why Robert E. Lee, he went with his nation, well, with his primary national identity, which was Virginia, not, not, not American. Uh, so America never, I, I will argue that, I mean, there are aspects of our lives where this I, American identity has been variously strong at times. And, you know, during World War II, I think that you would have seen a pretty united American nation. I think most of American history, that's been the exception and not the rule. And now, whereas before, you, you kind of weren't fully aware of it because you were in your little bubble. And in your little bit over you're thinking, well, yeah, yeah, I'm part of the American nation, but this nation is first and foremost. But you didn't understand that that's the way it was for, for most other people as well. So you still had this illusion that, well, I'm the exception to the rule, but really... We're we're American nation first, but now that's that's kind of coming out in the open, and we're we're kind of coming to terms with the fact that uh, this idea of American nation it's I, I don't think I don't think it I don't want to say that it doesn't exist at all, but I'll say that it's it's not nearly as fundamental dri a driver for a significant portion of people that live in this land. And and I mean well more than half. That's a problem. So you don't have a well, nation state in America. So well, you, it's it's not new. I mean, well, my you point, look at other. Well, you look at other cultures, other empires that were pluralistic. Uh, Roman Empire, same thing. 
Well, the, the Romans, the there was a Roman identity, but it, but it never became like a strong Roman nation. Yeah, but the, it, it, those... It was centered around an emperor. Those institutions that lasted thousands of years were not pluralistic. I mean, you, you look at the Huns, you look at all of the different uh, uh, nomadic peoples of the steppes. Uh, they created these huge empires, incorporated lots of different kinds of people in them, and just as quickly as they were created, they dissolved. You look at Rome, you look at Byzantium, you look at uh, the, you look at China, who have in, singular in various identities, forms, right? Right, but they have singular, or if not singular, pretty well focused identities. They had an identity uh, that overrode the plurality. They had a u unity in their diversity. Correct. We, we don't have that in the United States right now. Yes. That's, we don't. That's, yeah. I, I, don't, I, I believe that's true. I believe that the, the divisions are fundamental. Like well, there's so many divisions. subcultures here between rural culture and urban culture and urban cultures that are, you know, you have Latino urban culture, black urban culture, white urban culture, Jewish urban culture. I mean, you can go through, and those are just on the surface. You're, there's many, many more cultures within those uh, subcultures. And th that's just in the urban areas. You have similar divides in, in rural areas. You have North culture versus Southern cultures versus Eastern culture versus Western culture. Now you can say this is true with Rome and China and the Greeks. You can you can go and and find these variations within their cultures as well. But when the those variations within the cultures were at their height is when they started to fall apart, and that's you, you know that you know as as you were talking, I thought about something. The one of the great unifiers for the United States of America was its identity as number one. That's a powerful attraction to identity, to be number one. Number one, not just in the world, but number one of all time. To be the most powerful, the most wealthy, the most advanced nation state whatever you want to call it in the history uh, in in human history in all of human history you had it, an identity that was built upon being the best of the best of the best and you know it's like you you look at football teams and you know the Philadelphia Eagles I'm an, I'm an Eagles fan and there's a there's a there's a running back that the Eagles have his name is Adaye forget whatever his first name is, but he uh, a few weeks ago he was kind of complaining because he wasn't getting the ball enough. And while well, he's saying he wasn't getting the ball enough, he needed more touches. He's kind of kicking up a little bit of waves. But but the Eagles are winning. They're like 12-1 and one now. So, so there was a little bit of dissent there, but that little bit of dissent was pretty quickly held in check. And he just did an interview recently right after – the Eagles uh, beat the Giants, and he was, you know, I, I'll do whatever the coach tells me to do. I just accept the role that I got, you know, because we're winning. Because now he's part of an identity that's number one, and it kind of glosses over some of those differences. It glosses over some of the disappointments that you have in, in the identity group that you're part of. But now the United States of America, it's, it's kind of... Hmm, Maybe it's not number one anymore. I mean, you got China, and you know well, which 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 economy is bigger, China or America? I don't know. Depending on how you do the numbers, it's China, and China's coming. It's not going anywhere. The United States of America is not going to be the most powerful, the most advanced, not even the most advanced, because now technology is is such a level where you have you have you have a team of Ethiopians that are working on cutting-edge artificial intelligent technology. A team of Ethiopians. The, the advanced technology isn't... You're, you're not able to contain it within the United States of America anymore. So when those things start to go away, then suddenly that identity that you're willing to hold on to 
even though you had problems with it, even though you don't feel like it was utilizing you in the right way, you know, not giving you enough run in place, dude, you're part of the winning team. I am number one. You know, you, you come home and you, and you look at your paycheck and you're being paid crap. You've been working for 15 years and you haven't gotten a significant pay raise. But man, the Star Spangled Banner comes up and the flag comes up and I'm number one. But when you can't say that anymore, then suddenly those things start to bother you a lot more. Like if, if, if the Eagles were losing, well, I guarantee you a Jaye would be a much more difficult problem for the Eagles than he is right now. There's some, there's some credibility to what you're saying because with the last administration, the economy tanking the way it had been for the last, what, eight to ten years, uh, a lot of people were out of work and the – the dissent, the anger, the uh, disillusion that people felt was palatable. Uh, but now the economy is starting to turn around, and I think people's attitudes are, are shifting. Uh, things feel lighter. Um, I think that that division that we're talking about seems to be diminishing. If the United States of America comes roaring back, overtakes China, and starts kicking butt again, then, yeah, a lot of the divisions will actually start to not be so divisive. And then the people right now, like this guy, they they won't be as nearly tolerated as as they are right now because the, the, the groups of people that are willing to totally rock the boat will be much smaller than they are right now. But that's that's a big if. Well, and you'd say, you know, America's not number one. It, it, it's, I was I reading an article. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't say it wasn't number one. I said yeah. it's, 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 it's not long for this world as far as the number yeah. one status. But I was reading an article of uh, a geostrate, uh, geostrategist. Is that even a word? Um, from Greece who was talking a about. A geopolitical strategist? Yeah, that's better. And uh, he was talking about how you can't measure, like, a single country on, on a single thing. And he, he went into some detail and said, you know, if you're going to look at, see, and talk about which country has the greatest economy, well, right now it seems to be China has a bigger economy than the United States. It's got the population density for it. It has more manufacturing. It's got a bigger economy. If you're going to look in, at... at uh, who has the most sophisticated uh, strategy, strategies uh, geopolitically, it would be Russia. And if you're going to look at, see, who has the largest, most powerful army, no one even comes close to the United States. You'd have to combine Russia, China, and Europe together to get to the level of where the United States is right now. Um, so you can't just measure... Well, who's the be who's the biggest, strongest country in the world? Well, yeah. Well, I did strong say, in what way? I did way? say depending on how you look at the numbers. Correct. Strong in what way? If there was an all-out war right now, America would kick ass. It would if depend. It was economics? If, if America was fighting a defensive war, keeping countries from invading it. But if America was trying to invade countries, it would quickly run out of resources. I don't think there's a country in the world right now that the United States couldn't take. One on one, there's no country in the world that it couldn't take. It, no. it couldn't hold the land. It could never invade China and hold China. No, no, no. I mean the opposite. That there, there isn't a country in the world that the United States couldn't take. It could take any country it wanted, without question, in my mind. It, I'm not it could sure. bulldoze through. Go ahead. You mean just destroy it, gut it like a yeah. fish? Take oh, it. yeah, it can do that. It can totally gut them like a fish. If it wants to hold on to it and not ruin the whole land and wipe people out, that would be a problem. But if it well, just wants to flatten everything, yeah, it could do that. But the price for that, the, the, the price, the political price, the geostrategic price, uh, all of these other factors that come in, hey, you're going to have to trade with people, and no one's going to trust you yeah, for acting that, that way. I don't know necessarily. If the United States were to level China, I don't know how many nations would stand up and say, screw you. I think they'd oh, no, they stand wouldn't. up and say, uh, here, here yeah, you no, go. They, but they'd they be would. plotting. They'd be plotting. 
and they would all be plotting. It wouldn't just be the Chinese and everyone around China. It would be everyone. You have to make friends. Even and as so, it is, though, the United States is already... I don't know how many true allies the United States really has left. But really, just a oh, handful. No, no, I, I think you're wrong. I think everybody loves a winner. And when the United States is seen as a loser... I'm talking about no right now. The friend. United States is yeah. a loser right now. Yeah, but as the economy starts coming back and as uh, Trump continues to be bombastic and obnoxious, everyone sees that as, as a sign of things to come. And you better not screw with the United States because they're on their way back. Right now, the other nations are thinking it's only a matter of time before they impeach him. If that ever goes out the window and they start to realize, oh, we're dealing with this guy for a while, yeah, the dynamic will probably change Dude, pretty quickly. That that's that's already starting to happen very quickly. I'm not I mean, sure even, about that. What's that? I'm not sure of that. It may, may, I don't know what the reality is, but as far as the narrative, I don't think, and I don't think the other nations have have decided that that's the case. They're still treating Trump. Mm, I would say they're pretty disrespectful. When 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 the British government has uh, significant numbers of people in its parliament calling for the British government to to declare Trump a racist and and ban him from entering your country, that's not what an ally does. Okay, you that's should look up, that's pretty yeah. rude. That's. I mean, what are, I mean, within the state of unstate face parameters, that's pretty frickin' rude. That's pretty bold. You don't do that if you think that you don't want to piss off the United States. Because they pissed off the United States with that one. And the United States is, in essence, the Trump administration. Yeah. Right now. Look, at, look and see what uh, the leadership of France just said about Trump in the United States. Uh, I didn't, look and see, I didn't what, see that. What did they say? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember exactly, but it's essentially it was kissing his ass. Uh, and then look and see what uh, what an outright Marxist, like the Prime Minister of Greece, he came here and he was kissing Trump's ass again. It, it It's one after the other, dude. It's one thing to read the tabloids. It's another thing when they get one-on-one -on -one with the president and say, oh, you know, Trump said some harsh things during the election, but he spoke hard truths, and he's actually doing things right now to move his country in a better direction. This is a Marxist, a, a, not even a Marxist, a Maoist, an, an openly declared Maoist who is talking and kissing Trump's ass. And they're some of Trump's the worst ass. people, some of the worst yeah, people. Yeah, of course. And, and you have the same thing with the socialists now in France. Look, America's not going anywhere. They know Trump isn't going anywhere. It's pretty much obvious to everyone who's been following this that all these charges are hyped up. If they try to remove Trump, whether it's with a soft coup or impeachment or whatever, there's going to be a revolution in the United States. And, yeah, and there's going to be a civil war. Yeah, the, would the cost, I have, I have the cost of that. that, the cost of doing that would be grotesque. Um, and so they've decided... You know, maybe we shouldn't try and do this. But what's interesting to me is that there's now a counter coup and a, and a soft civil war, if you will, um, because a lot of the people that really went after Trump now seem to be in hot water with one, um, what would you call them, one escapade or another. Um, there are all sorts of silly things coming out in the news, and you have to wonder, is this, a, is this by chance, or is this some kind of orchestrated counterattack? And the more I look at it, the more it's, or it seems to be orchestrated. You know, all yeah, of these... I, I'm, I, I think there's some mix therein, uh, thereof. Of course. I think, I think some of the people, like Al Franken... That actually might have been a dem op in which they were willing to throw throw one of their people under the bus because they wanted to try and stop Roy Moore. Interestingly, I remember some of my some of my Democrat friends and you know who you are. You were 
You were proud little peacocks running around saying how moral the Democrat Party was because even though it hurts us, we're still willing to kick our own out what they've been accused of sexual improprieties like like Al Franken. Well, well, now that Roy Moore has lost, all of a sudden, all the Democrats are suddenly doing a back, back step and they're like, no, 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 maybe Al Franken shouldn't leave because it was an op the whole time. It was designed... It was, it was pointed at Roy Moore, and it was pointed at Donald Trump. And when they trotted out the ladies, the, you know, they re-trotted out the ladies that accused Trump of sexual... It, it didn't do anything. It, I mean, it may, it may hurt Trump in the polls, but this is a guy that doesn't give a crap about the polls. He's doing his freaking job, whether you like what job he's doing or not. Dude is doing his job, and he's freaking ruthless. And I think they're kind of caught off guard, like, holy crap, this guy just doesn't freaking care. And I think they were hoping maybe the Republicans, they could pick up some Republicans, but I think the Republicans are looking like, dude, listen, man, we were with you guys, but now it looks like we're going to lose our jobs. You know, the, the Democrats are polling very well for 2018. Donald Trump might ha have to deal with some uh, a democratic congress uh and 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 that and that reality is mostly because the republicans fundamentally failed to carry through with donald trump's agenda the republicans aren't going to show up and vote for the republicans because they didn't they didn't do the agenda of the guy that they elected and i'm speaking in well, generality it's not all republicans been, are alike but they've been undermining trump since he got in uh, why vote pretty aggressively, that? pretty, yeah, pretty, why? pretty. But now they're like, holy crap, this guy's still here. And uh, at this point, okay, maybe maybe Trump is unpopular in the general. Basically, he's unpopular because the Democrats don't favor him by like maybe 90 to 10. And the Republicans favor Trump maybe only 70 to 30. So, I mean, the Republicans have a significant portion of never Trumpers that are still, mm hmm but the Republicans recognize, the Republican leadership recognizes that, hey, hey, whatever we are, and yeah, we're really Democrats, but, but still, our power base and the way we get paid and the way we stay in a position where we can do the deals that enriches our families, it's to stay in this seat. And we're going to lose this seat. We can't go along with this anymore. I think you're going to see more and more Republicans abandon the, the coup. Well, they have to, Un unless they, they don't care, which they do. No, they're in it for the they, they're they in it for the to. enrichment that they get from holding onto that seat, and they're about ready to lose it. Yeah, what they, they need they, to do if they want to hold on to their seat is over the next few months they got to aggressively push for Trump's plans. You you need to ignore the media. You need to ignore the polls, and you need to dig in and do Trump's agenda. I'm not saying I want it or I don't want it. I'm just saying strategically, that's about your only hope, because otherwise a lot of you are going to be going home in 2018. Yeah. I, I, they, and we ended up the show. We're, we're out of town time. We're actually over time already. Yeah, so what was the next we ended subject up with one to talk topic. about? Huh? What was the next subject? Uh, the next subject was 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 the Kurds. Yeah, we didn't get to it. Yeah, <laughs> this, and this that's is fine. and this is when we started off with a story in which you said, "What? There's nothing to talk about." <laughs> There's lots to talk about. the The issue is that this issue is a non-issue because it's no, never it going to happen. It absolutely it's not. It is an issue. It's, I told you why it's an issue. It's not going to happen. It's it's no, it's not going to happen. Of course, it's, nobody believes and it's going to happen. And let me tell you something. Whatever country puts those blue helmets here. Once those blue There's no country that will do that. There's no country that will do that. Yeah. No country yeah. is going to send their UN troops to America to to try to confiscate guns from American citizens. Right. Because the federal government whatever administration allow it under gets Trump. in at that point uh, is going to go after them like gangbusters. I'm, I'm trying not to swear. Well, they're they're I'm never sure. going to set foot on American soil. I'll just say because that. they know what's going to happen. Their, their boys are going to get murdered, and then we're going to be gunning for them. Yeah, like I said, though, it's, 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 it's something that was said 
that this guy knows full well is not full well is not going to happen. The fact that nothing has happened to him is an indication to me that the the Democratic leadership, such as it is, is looking at this as a test. They they know that the that there's going to be backlash, but what they want to know is how hard is the da- backlash. Where where are they at? You know, let's let's figure out where we're at. This you know what this is? This is they're putting their finger up in they're finding out where's the wind blowing and how hard is it blowing so we know what we got to do you know how we can ratchet things up to push Americans to fear guns unless the guns are magically in the hands of people with with special badges and government licenses and on that note I think we're done what was the other subject you were going to talk about uh, the other th- topic was uh, prepper was uh, not 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 preparing from a position of fear. No, let fear get you to start preparing. Oh yeah, and then and then prepare rationally. Yeah, uh, yes, yes. Uh, fear is the beginning of wisdom. It's not the end. It, it's the beginning. Fear, you, you, yeah, yeah. Fear, well, fear, fear gets you to confront the reality. But if you're acting through fear, then your your planning is going. You're going to end up being totally crazy defensive, and you're not going to be planning for a constructive, positive future. Let's just say you're going to put all your effort into guns and sandbags. They're like, hey, we got guns. We got ammo. We got sandbags. We got food. The, oh. the, the Stoics used to say that pain is the greatest teacher. And that's true. Stoics. It is absolutely true. So think about the kind of pain that you will be forced to deal with uh, in a no-shit situation, uh, and then let that guide you, not through fear, but with logic and reason as to what the best solutions would be in your situation and how to prepare for them. There you go. There we covered the high pressure. We're not going to okay. get to the world one. That was that. That could take up a whole show in and of itself. No, that's real quick. Real quick. Oh, you got you can't, you can't get something. Iran, in there. All right. Iran has a sizable Kurdish population. Turkey has a sizable Kurdish population. Iraq has a sizable Kurdish population. Then there are other countries in the area that, like Armenia, Syria, Jordan, that have small Kurdish populations. So Russia, the United States, Israel would like to see a Kurdistan, and lots of European countries would like to see a Kurdistan emerge. Israel, because it would be a buffer against Iran. Uh, And that is why Iran is dead set against a Kurdish state because it knows it has something to lose. Huge. And we can leave it at that. And we'll leave it at that. And that's a that's a conversation that's all kinds of ramification. I'll just say this. Watch the Kurds. And and for a lot of my libertarian type friends, uh part of that mix is Rahava, the great uh experiment with I'll say free association governance that's going on in Rahava, pay very close attention because they're in that mix. They're in that mix heavily. And and uh, we will not be seen. I may put up some, some little video experts here and there, but iWire Pulse is taking a Christmas holiday. I didn't plan on mind. doing it. As you are, but I, I didn't plan on doing it until next week. But this week, I have a I have all these concerts that I have to go through Tuesday and Wednesday, and and then Thursday is my wife's birthday, so she wants me to do stuff with her. So, it turns out this week is shot too. So this week and next week there will be no shoes shows, and wow, we will have you've our been really. You've been really messing up your words tonight a lot. Thank you. Appreciate do do that. you you sure that monster is helping you? That monster is helping me, dude. Is I it? would have fallen asleep. Uh. So, at any rate, we will see you January 3rd, 2018. Ish. We'll see you next year. 
On Wednesday. Wow. It's a Wednesday. No. January twenty January third, twenty eighteen. It'll be I Wire Pulse Wednesday with myself and the one true Niz. And as usual, make sure you visit our site, iState.tv. And if you want to find the show notes, well, you're going to find a lot of articles we didn't get to because we really only got to one. But the show notes can be found at iState.tv slash I zero zero. Okay, what number is it? Oh, yeah, I zero zero seven. That's iState.tv slash I zero zero seven. So thank you, everybody that joined us. And we'll see you. We'll see you next year, everybody. Good night, everybody. Yay.